Hello students, welcome to Science and Tech series with Dr. Vivek Rana. Hope your preparation is on right track. In last lecture, we had covered the ambitious program to Moon by ISRO Chandrayaan 3. Today, we will discuss a new theme which is in headlines, small modular reactor. So we can say, classify this topic in domain of nuclear energy or you could say emerging technologies grabbing headlines because we have seen in prelims as well as in mains a lot of impetus is given to emerging technologies which are uh, both positives and negatives. So a uh, basic question can be framed that discuss the scope of small modular reactors in India's quest for clean energy or what are the likely basic pros and cons of this basic uh, setup. So coming to uh, this theme we have to understand after the tragic incident of Fukushima disaster in Japan 2011 there was a global outrage and lot of countries decided to just uh, take nuclear energy out of its energy mix. We have seen Germany as well as many other European nations taking a bold decision to eventually phase out nuclear energy. Even the local population of Japan was not too optimistic about future of nuclear energy and there was an announcement that Japan too will follow the suit and eventually phase out. But currently we have seen the current government has revived the uh, due to rising energy needs there is no other option they are once again reinforcing their faith and there, uh, this emerging technology of small modular reactor is now presenting an alternative route which is comparatively safer than the conventional nuclear reactor design and it's uh, it's touted as revival of nuclear energy in most countries so we will be discussing the possible benefits some of the minor concerns which it faces and also what is india's quest is india th thinking on the lines of adopting this technology or not so first of all, if we look at the sustainable development goal, the sustainable development goal 7 clearly caters to universal access to energy because there are pockets which are still not uh, get, getting the 24-7 elusive goal of power supply and in background of Paris agreement, we see that there is a, a herd to, to just decarbonize the economy. So nuclear energy comparatively is not does not contribute to any direct emissions and is touted as one of the solutions to the, the uh, you could say clean energy quest for any country which have declared bold nationally determined contribution with voluntary pledges. So we can say in this background the benefits are if we cater to the world small modular reactor the small clearly highlights that the size of this reactor is going to be almost you could say one third and similar is the their energy generating capacity because currently the basic classification which uh, through which nuclear reactors are being classified are micro nuclear reactors, small modular reactors and conventional nuclear reactors. The small or you could say the micro one the first category just generates about 10 megawatt of energy whereas the current theme which we are catering is likely to uh, generate up to you could say 700 megawatt whereas the conventional generate 700 to 1000 megawatt of energy india currently has the conventional nuclear designs and we have 22 operational reactors uh, which are generating 6780 megawatt of energy roughly contributing to just three percent of energy generation Whereas if we look at the global picture, currently the status of nuclear energy is not too alarming. It just contributes to 10%. But with more flexible designs like modular reactors coming to the picture, there can be uh, fresh impetus and we can say in background of this Paris agreement, such designs may get uh, more popular in coming days. So then we can say the small refers to the size of reactor in terms of energy generating capacity. The modular means that these reactors do not, do not need a large site for their operation. They are made in factory. They are designed such. They can be designed modulated as per the requirement and they can be easily transported to a small uh, site where the energy plant can be set up. So basically in rural setups where clean energy still remains a quest, this could be a potential solution which some of the countries might explore. Coming to the reactor here, there is no much change. We all know there are two basic processes for generating energy from nuclear. 
either it could be nuclear fission or the elusive nuclear fusion so basically the all three these design rely on nuclear fusion process if you are not from background let me just brush up that it is just the fragmentation of a large nuclei into two smaller units for example uranium being split into barium krypton and generating large amount of heat which is eventually used to generate energy so basically it has its own advantages of being highly efficient form of energy generation you could generate large amount of energy from small amount of heat but at the same time there are major limitations like availability of fuel and the waste generated being radioactive in nature so basically you just have to brush up your nuclear fusion and fusion concept because fusion is more better method than fusion we have already discussed that in our class lectures so basic advantages are going to be the small design easy to make comparatively economical option to generate nuclear energy and then uh, it has additional advantage of refueling advantage because we have seen in conventional nuclear designs it takes almost refueling cycle is every alternate year it takes on two years but in case of small modular reactors uh, you have advantage of almost three to seven years so comparatively they require lesser refueling cycle moreover if you go to more specifics then they are easy to design comparatively safer and they are cost effective the energy generation per unit as compared to is at times is touted to be on higher side so basically any developing country which is in quest for clean energy can explore these small modular reactors by taking necessary basic uh, precautions and also we have seen that in current times where there are ambitious programs in being launched to decarbonize the economy and countries want to just be play safe by diversifying their energy matrix because in current ukraine russia crisis we have seen the oil prices spiraling up and a lot of geopolitical permutation combinations can you know, be counterproductive for some of the energy so it we should any country if it wants to be secure or it wants to be you could say atam nirbhar the keyword which the uh, current prime minister uses it's a lot better to have multiple energy matrix right from solar wind geothermal tidal and why not nuclear energy as well because this energy uh, is definitely can take shoulder the burden while transitioning to a green economy a major quest for all the countries and another advantage is the comparatively gestation period is small we have seen any nuclear reactor which is coming conventional one and it tries to come up it takes lot of uh, precious time at times there are conflicts there are you can night nuclear liability law uh, you could say violations and sometimes the two countries when they are tying tying up for this quest they are not on same page whereas in these case the projects are going to be smoother faster to implement and you could scale up as per your requirement and there is flexibility of design you can operate as per many sites as is uh, your required so um, uh, other angle which uh, we have to discuss is the other side of the story because there are critics to small modular reactor the first say that eventually it's a form of nuclear energy so it carries the same heavy burden of liabilities which comes with the nuclear fission that is going to be the waste management issues now some of the uh, because the waste we all know is radioactive in nature it has to be it requires additional protocols for management and it becomes it could become quite sensitive because any accidental leakage like chernobyl could be disastrous for future generations so basically that burden is, is nuclear reactor even though they are small in size they will additionally carry so there is no escaping the fact from this some of the critics also argue that instead it's what lot better to have like india like, like strategy we have 22 operational reactor in six specific states and in roughly we can say we have seven major units so they are easy to monitor and guarded by cisf from any potential disaster or terrorist attack in case of this the risk increases many fold because if you are going to multiply the small modular reactor sites in you could say uh, almost thrice or you could have four times the original number then the energy uh, associated with the risk and the risk uh, becomes manifold amplified so they say that this is not a advisable decision to have so many small uh, time bombs like things which are cannot uh, be immune to disasters or some uh, errorous human activity 
apart from that they also say that there is a more small uh, reactors also have some neutron uh, neutron leakage risk associated with them which once again uh, some of the critics uh, make ground for criticizing these reactors now coming to india's strategy because we have roughly less than 3% share of nuclear energy and we have made bold commitments of making almost 50% of our energy to be generated from renewable energy 500 gigawatt to be specific at recent health cop you could say 26 uh, in the you could say the glasgow so in those updated ndcs now india has no other option but to explore clean forms of energy even though our green wo mainly revolves around solar energy yet we cannot rule out that india is going to make a transition already we have made plans that india is going to to explore small modular reactors there is ambitious target of generating almost 10% energy in long run so almost we are going to set a benchmark for this strategic transmission and all and we have announced a small target as well that uh, is roughly the 10% of energy matrix is going to be from nuclear energy by 2035 so clearly we are phasing out the fossil fuels and just diversifying Our mix. Now the another question which can be asked on background of this question is that how many countries are you could say uh, giving its benefit of doubt to the small modular reactor? So it's not that India or is the is the starting point or some only a handful of countries exploring. Currently, over seventeen different countries are putting their stakes at small modular reactors. And if you uh, have to quote any example, then the ideal example would be. the russia's academic lomonosov now academic lomonosov has a reputation of being world's first floating nuclear plant and it is based on small modular reactor design and countries like usa you could say argentina even china they are uh, in, in quest to diversify the energy mix and rely on this technology so we can say we can be little optimist about this technology because too guarded or too cautious approach at times could be counterproductive this is an emerging technology and early starters would definitely get benefit of it so so india is in quest for this emerging model and make sure you just revise your fission fusion model what are basic components what is the role of a modulator control rod how is the t2 or other coolants operating so that we already cover in class lecture so we will not be uh, specifying and also the basic terminology is what is a breeder reactor what is a fast breeder reactor or what are pressurized heavy water reactors should are to be revised once again so well, this is one of the static themes and you could easily manage it with the basic rotation so i hope we got a fair idea about the uh, small modular re reactors and make sure you update this basic facts in your class note because at times we just listen to the lecture and do not write it down uh, it, when it will be two or three months and when uh, if you have to attempt any question without written practice it may not facts may not recall as specific as they have been make a habit of writing at least four or five key points when such lectures are being uploaded only then you would get a dividend at the examination so only listening is not going to make too much help so i hope uh, you got a uh, basic details about this emerging technology we'll be back soon with another science and tech domain short so best of luck keep working hard and stay focused thank you very much